Previously on Bite Sized Engineering. For my 100th video milestone, I handed creative control over to you, the Bite Sized Engineering community. I challenged you to come up with a mystery project that I have to build. The catch? Everyone knows what the project is except for me. A box of parts from DigiKey showed up with one clue. I'm supposed to build some sort of game. That's it. No rules, no schematics, no instructions, just me, a pile of electronics, and a whole lot of guessing. After days of failed ideas, mounting confusion, I ended up calling the only two people who actually know what I'm supposed to build, Ian and Jonathan, two Patreon members who organized this whole thing. But they didn't give me answers, just riddles. Halfway through our call, my patience was running low because I was getting frustratingly little information. This is your project. A yes or a no would be really appreciated. The call was coming to an end, and I still had no idea what to build. Let's jump back into our call, where the fog is starting to lift, the pieces are starting to connect, and the real vision is finally coming into focus. Pinball. Pinball. Okay, so I do one like this, and then I do another set of conduits that go on the other, the other side, like this. Am I making a pyramid? I think it would be more fun if it was like a pyramid. So this is like pinball paddles left and right. If my opponent serves the, the ping pong pixel and it comes down my left conduit, then I need to hit my left paddle. Power up makes it go faster. The speed of the, speed of the ball has to go like power up and you like shoots it across the net. That sounds like a power up. Once they return the serve, it goes back to the normal speed. Okay, I think I've got enough to go on where I can start building this. And I'm sure that as I build it, I'll have a little bit more inspiration, and I, I think I can come up with, with something that should be fun. Can't wait to see what you come up with. Thank you for your help, I appreciate it. Anytime, we like to make you suffer. Yeah, it's been worth it so far. <laughs> oh, good. That phone call was extremely helpful. It gave me just enough information to start moving forward, and I'm gonna start 3D modeling this in the computer so that I can get a little better understanding of how this is gonna work. I need to design and 3D print some little couplers that will slide onto the end of the metal conduit and then attach to the hinge here. I'm done 3D printing these pieces now, and they're ready to go on the conduit. So let's see how well I got the fit here. Okay, that's a little tight. Oh, that one slid on way easier. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh, that's very wobbly already. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to move around here. Okay. Oh, oh no! That broke! Crap! Um, okay, well, I'm gonna have to make that stronger somehow. But this is giving me a sense of what this is gonna look like and I'm excited to put the LEDs on and the buttons and start programming this game because I think it's gonna be actually pretty fun. The solution to this problem is actually not as hard as I thought. I can add some fillets in here which will give this piece a lot more strength. While I'm reprinting those couplers with the added fillets, I've had some time to think about this project. I like the idea that the community came up with, kind of having this pyramid shape, but I kind of had an idea that I wanted to explore a little bit and that's making the pathway of the LEDs kind of an arch shape instead of a pyramid shape. I just think that the curvature of an arch looks a little more visually interesting than a pyramid. I'm thinking I'm going to find something flexible like vinyl tubing or even some like PVC pipe that's thin enough. So let's see what I can find at the hardware store. I'm back in the car now heading home. And by the time I get home, those pieces should be done 3D printing. So I'll put those on just to see how they work.
I just finished putting on these new couplers with the fillets and they look awesome. But I'm a little bit conflicted because as I mentioned in the car, I have an alternative design idea. So let's go ahead and draw, oh, hold on a second. It looks like our top secret design has been compromised. We've been infiltrated by my kids. So I'm gonna start with a fresh canvas here. I'm gonna use the metal conduit to make a square like this. And then I'm gonna have the flexible PEX tubing to make two opposing arches like this. So they meet in the middle. It's kind of like putting up a tent. You have those rods that kind of bend and create the structure of the tent. It's the same idea with this. So let's go ahead and design and print some pieces that go in the corner that hold the metal conduit as well as the tubing. The four pieces of conduit will create a square and they'll be connected together using these pieces. Now they also have a hole in the top and that's where the arch pieces are gonna go. This is a lot bigger than I realized. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing to model something on the computer. It's an entirely different thing to build it in real life. Is this even gonna work? All right, now it's time to cut the PEX tubing. The reason I got two colors of PEX tubing is because this is a two player game and I thought it would be kind of cool to have a red player versus a blue player. It's like putting up a camping tent. You start with opposite poles, right? Isn't that the rule? Oh, so much easier when your dad's not yelling at you. And final one. Yes. Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. This is so cool. We are ready to move on to the next step, which is attaching LEDs to each of these PEX pipes. So I'm gonna cut those and I'm gonna zip tie them on. And then once I get that in place, I can start writing some code uh, to light up the LEDs. Eventually I have to add all of the buttons and everything like that, but this is moving along. I, I'm thrilled with this. I've got this wired up and I've just connected one of the LED strips for now, but I'm ready to plug it in to see if it works and see how it looks. All right, you ready? Nice. That looks so cool. I wanted to take a quick second and talk about a couple of things. I wanna say a huge thanks to DigiKey, who has been a long-term sponsor of this channel. It occurred to me that some of you watching me here on the Bite Size Engineering channel may not know that I also make content for DigiKey on their YouTube channel. I've made about 20 videos that are uploaded to their YouTube channel, and it's similar projects to what I work on here on this channel, but even a little bit more technical. I thought I would throw that out there in case you didn't know that I also make content on their channel and you wanna watch more of what I do, that's a great place to do it. In fact, if you do go over there and watch one of the videos, please leave a comment and let them know that you came because of me. Most other brands that I've worked with want me to stop a video and do a really long ad read. That is not the case with DigiKey. Their goal is simply to help people like me make their ideas come to life. And that's what they've done for me and my channel. So I'm asking you to go to their website and show some support there and see what they have that might help you out on your next project. I don't know if you noticed yet, but I had a little bit of an aha moment this morning as I came in here. Yesterday, I was like ducking underneath this thing and like really straining myself to get around. And it occurred to me that I could just pull this bar out and it still works. So I kind of threw that on the ground for now. The next thing is to figure out how I'm going to mount the push button. So there are four buttons, a left, a right, a swap and a power up button and each player needs one of those. So I think I'm going to use the two by four as sort of a base for the buttons. This is gonna be my control panel. So I think I'm gonna cut a piece of wood on the laser cutter and cut out the holes for the buttons and then even make labels for them right there on the laser cutter. And that will be my left, right, my swap and my power up 
buttons. As I cut the LED strips, there was actually a bit of length left over on each string. I have about a meter left of LED strip, and I think that this is going to be the power-up meters. As you play the game and you build up points, this power meter will kind of fill up, and when it gets to the end, you can hit the power-up button and discharge that on your opponent. Let me briefly recap the mechanics of this game. So you've got two players, a red player and a blue player, and each of them have four buttons, left, right, swap, and power up. This is gonna be a hybrid game between the classic game Pong and like a pinball machine. We're gonna have a pixel that travels back and forth like a volley between uh, two players in a tennis game or a ping pong game. When one player serves the pixel to the other, it will travel over the LEDs, and as long as their opponent uh, returns it you know, in time, then the game continues on. When the pixel is coming at a player, they can decide to hold down the swap button and return the serve, and that will change the trajectory on their opponent, and that also kind of increases the difficulty of this game. Once a player has returned so many serves, their power meter increases, and then they can hold down the power up button, and then they'll launch that thing much faster at their opponent, making it way more difficult to return. With all of that in mind, let's take a look at the button console that I just cut out on the laser. I'm thinking that, uh, at least for me, my right hand is my dominant hand. I think I'm gonna want the left and right buttons to be on that hand because those are the buttons I'm gonna use the most often. The next button that I'm gonna use the most often is probably swap. So I want that one easily accessible so I can hold down the swap button and return the volley, which will change the direction that it goes back to my opponent. And then of course the power up button is here all the way on the left hand side. And once I've earned up enough points on my power up meter, I can hold that down and I can launch it back to my opponent. So I've got the two by four here and I think what I'm gonna do is attach the power up meter kind of here, and then I'll put all four of the buttons in their slots like this, and then I think I need to attach it here in the middle like this. Let's go ahead and get these things assembled. So I don't really know what I'm doing right now, so I need to talk this out loud, but I've got four buttons here, and each button has a ground, and then of course a signal wire that we're going to connect to ground. Uh, I think in order to save on wire, I don't need to run a ground for every single one all the way back to the microcontroller. What I wanna do is kinda of run a ground bus that uh, all of these things can tie into. The other thing I need to consider is that each button has an LED on it. All of those LEDs also need a ground wire. The other piece of this is the LED strip. It also has three wires that need to run back to the central control board. I'm gonna to try to route all of these wires inside the conduit and then inside the PEX tubing so that they're all hidden and you won't be able to see any of them.
I started making YouTube videos here on this channel back in 2016. My life was very different back then. I didn't have any kids. We lived in Maryland and I was making videos while I was finishing up my engineering degree. Over the last nine years and 100 videos, this turned from a little hobby to a hobby that made some money and to a full-blown business that is my full-time job. There are some of you that have been with me through this entire journey and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for sticking with me. I also want to thank the Bite Size Engineering channel members. So those are people who have decided to join and support me either through Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Your continued support means so much to me. Let's be honest, the internet can be a really ugly place, but there are some parts of the internet where it's not like that, and the Bite Size Engineering Discord is one of those places. I often post what I'm working on and ask for feedback on the Discord server. It's an amazing, supportive, collaborative group of people where we all share our ideas, we give each other feedback. How many other places on the internet can you say those things about? If you enjoy watching my videos and you get what I'm going for here and you want to support me, becoming a member through Patreon or YouTube memberships is a great way to do that. I've had a really busy weekend working on this project. I've wired up all eight buttons and each button has an additional LED inside, so it was a lot of wiring. I've also wired up the RGB LED strips that make up the arches. And then there are the two additional RGB LED strips that are the power meter for each player. All of the wiring has been fed to this central point here and it needs to be connected to this control board. This has the Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller on it and it's going to control all of these things. This is a little capsule that will get screwed onto the top here and it will contain all of the wiring as well as the control board. But I've run into a problem here on my first 3D print and that's that I can't actually get this control board inside the capsule. That's because I need to include a little slot here inside those threads so that this can slide through. The other thing I didn't account for in this 3D print was the height of the solder joints. I know that PCBs are usually 1.6 millimeters thick and I just plugged that number in without thinking that there's some dimension here to these solder joints as well. So let me go ahead and print out another capsule fixing those mistakes and then I'll install it on the game. Oh my gosh, yeah, that took a lot of work to wire all that up. I'm starting to write some test code just to make sure all of the LED strips light up as they should and all of the buttons can be read and even the LEDs inside the buttons can light up independently of them pushing. We did it, we're in the home stretch. Next week in part three, I'm gonna put the finishing touches on this project and you're gonna be witness to the inaugural Pixel Ball, Ball World, World Championship. Championship. Actually, that might be a little bit dramatic. It's just gonna be me and cameraman Pat. But most importantly, we're gonna answer the question, did I use all of the components in the parts box? And did I fulfill my promise to you?